anyway, a little bit about myself beco- before we uh, we go deep dive into git um, i'm a self taught uh, software engineer not just a web developer i'm still learning a lot i've learned from a lot of people from mati- uh, the material people have shared um, and i uh, every day i feel so inspired to help uh, one or two three people who are also wishing to learn all about computer science software engineering web and all that so um feel welcomed and uh, feel free to share my video it is free everything is going to be free i'm not expecting any pay and will never be expecting any pay at all but i'll be doing these videos for you who wishes to learn so welcome and feel free also at the end of this video if you feel uh, inspired in one way or the other please leave a comment in the uh, in the comment section below and also you can give me suggestions of one or two three things i can make videos o- o- about or you can leave a comment about any positive or negative thing so feel free i'm not going to um, close the doors for comments i'm going to leave it open I- i'm open to critics i'm open to uh, uh, positive uh, criticism and negative criticism i welcome all that it's part of life and i'm not scared so let's get to know what a version control system is and in this case git so uh what a version control system is version control systems are tools used to track changes to source code or other collections of files and folders as the name implies these tools help maintain a history of changes furthermore they facilitate collaboration in terms of uh, software development or whichever sort of uh, collaboration people intend to um, so version control systems track changes to a folder and its content in a series of snapshots now when you're talking of snapshots here we have to be very careful snapshots really uh, um, applies to git not all version control systems use snapshots because to my understanding and to my research version control si- the other types of version control systems are based on file system and not really snapshots so uh so but in this case since we are we are so much interested uh, our interest is git so we can say that the version control system tracks changes to a folder and its contents in a series of snapshots where each snapshot encapsulates the entire state of files or folders within a top level directory um so uh so it, it has got a sort of a, a tree directory and, and the snapshot it, it does generate reflect the 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 tree uh, structure and, and and the other version control systems will just look at files where they'll do like uh, uh, timestamps of files and some sort of thing um, so that's the major difference but git takes a snapshot of uh, the whole tree structure of files and folders within that and it is capable of regenerating the same so when you're doing a checkout it gives you we'll see later on what a checkout is that i want to take into uh, deeper detail i want to break this down bit by bit so let me just proceed from there. So version control systems also maintain metadata like who created each snapshot, messages associated with each snapshot, and so on and so forth, which is very important. So we call uh, so the metadata later on when we'll be looking at the metadata, we'll be looking at what called logs. So from the logs, that's where we are able to capture the metadata. Very important so a little bit about uh, the origin of uh, git um, if you are really thinking of git uh, you, you are a developer it's not just enough to to get to you know get the commands uh, uh, master one or two three commands without knowing the the real details of the the ins and outs of those commands that's being unfair while using git so um, I really want you to get to know what um, uh, what 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 uh, what was used to um, build Git or to come up with Git. So um, Git um, was based on the distributed graph theory tree model, and, this, and to be specific, it's on a directed uh, acyclic graph. 
No, um, I don't want to get into so much detail here when t when talking about the t uh, graph theory, but the main idea here, I'm not going to use the mathematical definition of what a uh, displayed graph theory tree model is, but the main idea you should have in mind if you've gone into any computer science class, or if you've not, if you Google anything about tree, it's just a network of uh, nodes where we have one node connected to the other by means of edges or sometimes called vertices so uh, that's a very important idea now later on when we'll be uh, getting into git deep dive we'll realize that git is nothing but a collection of objects and blobs so uh, the connection of these objects and blobs you know is, is in form of uh, it's what uses the um, the graph uh, theory uh, tree model and uh, now just to break it down we have the the commits so one commit always refers to the other so you can find that commits are in form of uh, blobs you know um, so I, I, let's not get into that but basically I, I hope you have an idea of what a graph is so the main uh, and then the, the, we have the programming languages that been used to implement git the major language is c language um and you understand that the um, git was as a result of uh, uh the linux guys the guys who are writing the linux kernel they, they um they, they were using a different version control system and they <coughs> it is called uh, bitkeeper uh, if, if if i'm right that's what they were using linus torvald and, and and his team when they were developing linux and uh, it came to a point where the owners of uh, the bitkeeper you know it was the, the linux guys did not own bitkeeper but they, they 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 were paying for it so it came to a point where they couldn't um they were not in good terms so um the bitkeeper guys uh, stopped uh, offering their uh, uh, version control services to to uh, to Linus and his guys. So Linus, Torvald, and the, the 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 friends are not so uh, happy about it, and they decided to come up with their own cool tool, which we call Git today, and they wrote it using C, uh, C language. So uh, and also Shell, uh, no Shell to Shell. Uh, we use Shell to uh, automate. Um, tasks so that was also used so you will find that most of the commands are written using shell and then you also have Perl and TCL and 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 and, uh, and Python but I have to stress here that any language can be used uh, especially if you want to uh, further the use of git to suit your own needs you can is you can use any of the languages you're good at as long as you understand the ins and, and, and outs of git you can do that and then um so uh, this this idea of uh, a distributed version control system versus centralized version control system and git happens to be one of the uh, uh, of the uh, of the those uh, tools that fall under uh, distributed version control system it has its, its brothers and cousins like mercurial that fall under that you can get to know about the others and then uh, so um, when you're talking of a distributed version control system all it means is that all copies are working copies you know if you have uh, if you're if you're working as a team uh, contributing code to contributing uh, uh, if you're if you're uh, rather if you're working as a team that means each each individual within the team we can call them clients whatever copy they have that copy is a working copy so if our server gets compromised in one way or the other then that means we can use any of the clients copy or any of uh, those individuals copy uh, to regenerate uh, a fresh uh, to regenerate the copy that existed in the server which is a very important thing and that could not be possible with the centralized uh, version control system so uh so there's no need here to be connected to a central server so why learn git so we're learning git because at the moment it is a de facto standard for version control 
so you majority of developers majority if not all uh, use git we, although we have we still have some who still uh, are tied to the uh, to the centralized version control system which used to be the main thing in those days so um, the main competitors of, uh, of of git of course we have mercurial which is uh, 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 distributed version control system too but we also have the centralized version control systems like subversion cvs Purpose and uh, clear case. We have so many other examples we are not going to get into. So initially, what used to happen? So um, before we had the version control systems in existence, um, it was very tricky because uh, if 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 uh, if developers of or uh, if developers were working on some project and they wanted to uh, keep track of uh, the history and the changes the revisions they made on on, on, on their work uh, it was very difficult so they could zip the files you know and you no know, uh, at, at, at a particular point zip the file and then share you know stuff like that Stamp, they do um, create a folder at some place where they could like, store files and timestamp those those files uh, and some guys came up with a solution where they created a database and they could store files uh, copies of files into into the database of course those files were time stamped so that in case um, in case uh, something uh, they screwed up with the files that they were working on they could easily get back and retrieve the the the, the, the other files from the database and be able to regenerate um uh, a, a working uh, copy of uh, of the files so um from this idea um this is where the version control system uh, was born from you know and, and up to the moment we have a very popular um version control system that's being implemented in the lo in the in our disks um called the rcs you can take time and, and look at that and what rcs does basically is to enable you to regenerate uh to regenerate the files in case you screwed up with one or two three files you can be able to regenerate that using the rcs which is very very important okay so uh i had mentioned a little bit about centralized version control system so i'll just move very fast here so um with the centralized version control system what is very uh, common with this is that they have a single server that contains all the version files and a number of clients that check out files from the central place. So different from the decentralized version control system, with the decentralized version control system, we don't have uh, um, a number of clients to do the checkout of files from one place. You can check out files uh, from, uh, from your local uh, machine. So you don't have to have someone check out for you and and this one really has its advantages um, so and with the centralized version control system is the fact that uh, we have the, the, the admins are able to see all the changes that are taking place you know unlike with the decentralized version control system where we have to um, we have to match changes for you to be able to get the changes that have taken place otherwise you want to be able to tell which changes are taking place at that time at that point in time so uh so this the, the centralized version control system uh, that was an in, uh, the industry standard for quite some time before git came in and introduced the distributed version control system but git outclasses its predecessors by the fact that it introduces cheap local branching staging areas and multiple workflows what uh, the centralized version control system really uh, lacks so uh, very important now the distributed version control system uh, such as git mercurial baza and lux clients don't just check out the latest snapshots so you see you don't need an admin to check out uh, the files or the latest snapshots from the <laughs> from a central place so clients are able to do that so uh 
So clients don't just check out the latest snapshots of the files, rather they fully mirror the repository, including its uh, full history. And that's why I told you before that we have at, uh, what Git does, it takes a snapshot of the whole file structure and not just individual files as in compared to, um, to the centralized version control system. So which, which is an advantage, you know, with the centralized version control system, when you're doing a checkout, you're doing a checkout for a particular file you're working on at that point in time. So if something happens to the, central, uh, to the, cent uh, to the server, central server, then that means it, it, it goes, it compromises all the previous history and you're only remaining with the very current history or copy, but the other copies, you, you are missing them. But with Git, since you have uh, the whole file structure, a snapshot of the whole file structure, then that means you are safe. If something happens to the uh, central server, then that means whatever existed on the central server, you equally have it and you can use that to regenerate another copy to the, um, to the central server when it is fixed. So very important. So, um, so with the distributed version control system, you don't lose their whole history, but you're able to, every, every, every client has got uh, the history. So every clone is a copy that can be used to restore the last, the lost copies if something happens to the, to the server. So uh, Git boasts of, of uh, so many things as in compared to the other version control system and one of it is speed. The gods of speed blessed Git and Git is quite very fast. Um, why is it very fast? Because um, most of the commands, most of the operations you run, they, 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 are, they, they run locally. You don't have to interact with the, the remote server, unlike the centralized version control uh, system like CVS, you have to, to talk to the server, you know, so there's that, uh, there's that network overload, you know, for you uh, engaging with the server to and fro, to and fro. So that takes time, but with Git, everything is localized on your local machine you have everything almost every command that you run just um is uh, interacts directly with the, with you locally so um you can see the you can see the the cost of uh, interaction is is quite low and in very instant apart from two commands which of course are the git pull and git push because when you're doing git pull you're interacting with the remote server the remote file okay the origin uh, when you're doing git push you're also pushing your your, your changes from the local uh, copy or the local uh, machine to the remote server so very important for you to get to know that and then uh, git has got a very simple design that works you know and then it has strong support for non-linear development so you can have uh, thousands of parallel uh, th thousands of parallel branches and then uh, it is fully distributed we talked about that and able to handle large projects like the linux kernel uh, efficiency and and one thing is that we have uh, git has uh, within within git one fancy feature of git that it has implemented uh, a very nice compression uh, algorithm where it's capable of compressing huge chunks of uh, files into uh, into uh, very portable uh, smaller versions of the files where later on you can uncompress them and you know and uh, continue working on them so you can see you can work with huge uh, files within within git which is a very um, which is an a, a, an advantage so what's the how, how does git work so git tracks history as snapshots and not as files as i explained before and then um it takes actually a snapshot of the uh, of the entire uh, tree structure and not just a single file with a time a, a timestamp like the other um the, the other colleagues and then um each commit is a snapshot so when you're doing a commit that is a snapshot 
and then um, so just keep that in mind that each commit is a snapshot and then a commit is a is a SHA-1 checksum and cannot be lost so the idea here is is the very fact that before you do any commit when you've just done uh, when you've uh, when you've made changes or modification to whatever you are working on you can easily lose that but immediately you do a commit you can't lose a commit because immediately uh, we have the checksum and the checksum is stored into the database then that can't be lost but uh, modifications before be, when you've done modifications and then you've stayed you can lose that because that has not been stored in the database so any commit or any snapshot is usually stored in, in in the database immediately you do a commit that one goes into the database but uh, when you've just done modifications alone that one hasn't gone into the database we don't have a, we don't have a hash value for that and then that means that you can easily lose that if you lose those changes if anything happens if you screw up and you lose the changes then you can't get that so it's good for you to really get to understand that and then the content stored the content stored in the, in the database is in form of a hash value and we'll be looking at that so everything all the files and all the contents within the file are compressed you know are, are compressed and 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 uh, given uh, compressed it just into a hash value you know um so the the naming of the commits they don't have like real names but the hash values are used to refer to the commits uh, so uh, we are going to interact with, uh, with the with the hash values uh, in entirety going forward and be prepared to have a look at uh, to interact with lots of that going forward so uh, commit commits operations are local so no internet is needed as i told you most of the git operations are local um, and the only operations that require internet is when you're trying to access the origin or the remote file repository you're trying to pull changes from the remote repository you're trying to push changes into uh, to the remote uh, repository that's when you need the internet but the rest of the operations are just done locally which makes it very fast to uh, run these commands and interact with git so one one fancy feature is the compression of huge chunks of data and i, I mentioned that um so files exist in three main stages so when 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 you've uh, when you've done a uh, git checkout you have um you you have an entire uh, tree structure and then you make your changes you add stuff or you delete stuff uh when you're done we say you have done modification or you have modified the 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 you have modified your 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 file <coughs> and the next thing for you to do after you've modified the file you have to notify git that hey i've made changes here and i wish to commit so that stage is what you call at that point is what you call staging you're telling git now i wish to now when you're staging you're basically telling git that I am doing a selection of this and that file and i'm leaving this one out so i wish to 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 uh, uh to to create a snapshot of this file or that file or all files you know so that that's what you call staging you are actually making a selection of the files that you wish to include into the snapshot that you're going to create in the near future and then after you have made that selection now you do a commit now doing a commit is like now saving getting the snapshot and saving it into the database so when you are creating a snapshot you're basically creating a hash value of uh, of uh, of of uh, so you're basically creating a hash value and saving uh, saving that uh, into the saving that snapshot into the database so later on when you want to look into the contents of that uh, snapshot will use the hash value to um, to get the content of 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 that <coughs> very important so this leads us to three main sections of git project 
that is one we have a working tree and then you have a staging area and then you have a git directory very important so the git workflow so that 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 takes us to the git workflow so we, we modify files in a working tree and then after we've modified files in a working tree we selectively stage changes and we'll do that practically and you'll get to see how these things work after you've understood this it will become so easy and then you commit the changes the stage changes you commit them and i said when you're doing a commit you're basically saving the changes into the database that is the snapshot of all uh, all you've done to the files so you have to know that every time a checkout is performed a fresh working tree is availed from the data from the database so uh, is actually pulled off and and compressed and we'll do that and you'll see how um, how simple it is <coughs> so uh, from this image you can see we have a working directory this is where you, you do your modifications from you have the files and everything there um, and then uh, after after you've finished working on, on, on you've finished making the modifications what you can do is um, you, you, you now uh, state the files you tell git hey these are the files I wish to you might have more than one or two three files but you might not want to uh, commit all of them or include all of them into the snapshot so you might want to pick one or two so you pick the one or two and then you, you, you now that one or two you are picking and telling it hey these are the files I wish to add into um, into the snapshot we used git add for that you can see how simple how everything just gets into place so when you're going to meet these commands you you you, you will find it so easy you'll understand what they mean and what they do so we do git add to add a particular file to stage that file so after we do git add now we'll do git commit now we are creating the snapshot here now uh, when we do git commit we are basically saving uh, the, that snapshot into the database so that goes into the git directory or repository and we'll be looking into that because the git we have the git file that has got everything we'll get to dissect it you know um, do a surgery on it and then you'll be able to see the everything that is within there and get a clear understanding of everything and then now when you are done in git we have this idea of branches you create a branch you work on a new feature after you are done working on that feature you can create another branch and work on another feature now branches are just um, their are labels I can we, we, let's call them their labels so uh, different branches are meant for different features now maybe you, are, you you want one feature to work on a on on, on, a, on a cat project another feature to work on a, a dog feature you know, because the dogs have different behavior from the cats so you create a feature branch to work on the dogs another feature branch to work on the cats so um, these are different animals so they deserve different branches because so uh, and, and then on those those branches we can work uh, parallelly so once somebody another developer can work on the cat feature another developer can work on the dog feature you now you see uh, so when when one developer does git checkout that developer gets a fresh working directory from master because master is like the main so we get uh, the changes all the the the, um, the up to date changes co coexist within the master branch so when a developer does git checkout he or she gets a um, a fresh a fresh branch with the with, with all the, the, the up-to-date changes from the master branch and then the developer now is able to add the changes of uh, to modify the code using the 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 features that is supposed to is, is being tasked to create and then after that it will merge later on you'll merge those changes so uh, and using this procedure we've uh, talked about here we'll see that in in, in um, that will become so clear going forward and be able to understand it so easily now uh, just to finish on the introduction 
uh, with git you can use the git gui and that works that that is that simplifies things uh, but one one thing it does is is it fails in terms of exposing you into the uh, into use of uh, more commands so we have so many commands and if you only restrict yourself to using the git gui then you're going to miss out on uh, how to use those commands you are not going to really understand the ins and outs of git and so i really discourage you while you're learning git please avoid using uh, the git gui um, uh, restrict yourself to the command line because the command line gives you the flexibility uh, exposes you to all these other commands and like using the git gui which restricts you to the clicking of the uh, buttons you know the buttons don't have everything you get to the terminal and type everything and see how things work mess up get your hands dirty mess things up and get to learn things so um but before you use the git command line you have to install git so i'm not going to uh, get into the uh, processes of installation i think that is well documented you can google it if you have windows you can see how uh, you can you can google uh, the git, uh, i'll share with you the link so that you can be able to get the instructions on how to install git on on windows if you're using the mac uh, mac you can also get command the, the commands are different uh, if you're using uh, linux similarly uh, we have um, we have instructions for that so git 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 is um, git can be installed in any uh, distribution right now that is one good thing about it so um after we are done with that i one thing I, I want you to get to to know before uh, we get into so after after you are done with the installation um just a minute So during the installation one one very important command is the git the git config command so um before even you get into the git com git config command we have this very important command if if uh, you're doing installation and you wish to confirm anything you use git help and then you can enter here the command that you have if you have issues and you if you're not understanding what sort of com what the command does you can just do git config and then you you enter here the command that's one option and I, or you alternatively you can do git uh, git and then git command you enter here the command and then um, you can do help alternatively instead of typing the whole help you can just do git command help you'll get help another alternative is you can do uh, man man is a ma is, is a stands for manual so you want to we want to access a manual page for git but for a particular command so we'll say man, man git and then we'll do we'll enter here the command very important for you to get to know how to get help so thank you so much for um, for for taking part into the introductory bit of git um the next session is we are get going into git basics and here we are, we, are, we are basically going to uh, get into the commands and get to know the ins and outs thanks a lot and welcome uh, welcome for the next tutorial